In this video, we're going to discuss a bit about bivariate analysis and do a large picture overview to set up the rest of the bivariate methods we'll talk about um, in following videos. So generally when we're looking at bivariate analysis or two variable analysis, we're looking at some variable x and talking about what effect does x have on y. And what we call x or what we call y, um, we have a bunch of different names that we use for them. So often the x variable, the most generic, is the independent variable, or sometimes it gets called the explanatory, the predictor, or the covariate, or other names in other disciplines. And y is the dependent variable, or the outcome, or response, or again, a bunch of other names that get used. All generally alternate between using x and y, or calling them the explanatory and the outcome variables. So in general, in bivariate or two-variable analysis, we're looking at how do changes in x affect some y variable. Okay, or maybe using some x variable to try and predict some y. So we already talked earlier about setting up the foundations for a hypothesis test and a confidence interval. And in general, we saw confidence intervals generally took the form estimate plus or minus a margin of error. And we built them up on this foundation that um, when certain conditions are met, okay, and under certain circumstances, estimates usually stay within about two standard errors of the true value. So the true value is usually within about two standard errors of the estimate. And then we had to make minor tweaks to this depending on do we have normal, non-normal data, and so on. But we laid the foundation for those. Similar to hypothesis testing, right? we looked at how far is what we observed in a sample of data from what we would have expected to have seen if some null hypothesis is true. And then we calculated a p-value, which tells us what's the probability of observing what we did in our sample, or something more extreme, if the null really were true. So these will be our foundation for all the different bivariate methods of analysis we're going to talk about in following videos. We've learned a little bit that approaches, parametric, non-parametric, and we've also talked a little bit about the idea of resampling, or bootstrap type approaches or resampling approaches. And there's some pros and cons to each of these. So parametric approaches generally have lots of assumptions. They usually rely on having larger sample sizes. Um, parametric approaches have a higher power than, um, definitely than non-parametric approaches. Um, they have a lot of nice mathematical properties and they tend to be very sensitive to outliers. Non-parametric approaches tend to work well with smaller sample sizes. They make relatively fewer assumptions they also have lower power than parametric approaches. Um, and the nice thing about these is they're not sensitive to outliers. They generally work with ranking the observed data rather than the actual numeric values. And as we progress through different bivariate um, approaches of analysis, we'll look at parametric methods, non-parametric, and we'll compare and contrast the two. So some of these things will um, make a bit more sense as we progress through those conversations. Um, and finally, resampling approaches or um, a bootstrap, for example, type approach, they don't really need large sample sizes. Large sample sizes are nice, but not necessary. They make fewer assumptions than parametric approaches. They're much more flexible in the estimates we can calculate or the hypotheses we can test, um, but they don't result in nice, smooth mathematical functions like parametric approaches generally do. So all the details on these will be coming up shortly. So let's talk our way through a few examples. So let's consider a first example where we've got some x or explanatory variable. Say what drug is an individual given? And they're given drug A or B, okay, one of two treatments. And some outcome, which is the change in systolic blood pressure. So here we'd, look, we'd like to look at the effect that a drug has on systolic blood pressure. Okay. To visualize this relationship, we can look at things like side-by-side -side box plots, right? comparing drug A and drug B right? and their change in systolic blood pressure. One thing that you'll notice about these types of variables, here are these variables, X is a categorical variable, Y is a numeric variable. So we're going to start to discuss different um, methods of bivariate analysis appropriate for a categorical X and a numeric Y. Some of the ones that we'll look at are stuff like the two-sample t-test, 
one-way analysis of variance. We'll look at the Wilcoxon test, the signed rank and the rank sum test. So we'll look at all those in depth as we progress through other videos and other methods of analysis. So a second example we can talk about is considering an X variable of whether or not someone smokes and let's categorize it as yes or no and an outcome variable of do they develop cancer and again let's categorize it as yes or no. Okay. To visualize the relationship between these two we first want to think about what type of variable is X and Y. Here we can notice X is a categorical variable, Y our outcome is also categorical. So to analyze the relationship between these two visually we can think of making side-by-side -side bar plots. So we could look at does someone smoke, our X variable, yes or no, and do they develop lung cancer, yes or no. And so here we'll put the percentage with cancer or the proportion with cancer. And here's the one group and the other, and we'll label these in a moment. Where these pink ones here are the cancer, and the blue is no cancer. Okay, so We'll work our way through talking about different methods of analysis for this type of data. Things we're going to look at are things like Pearson's chi-squared test, Fisher's exact test, things like rate ratios or odds ratios, and other methods of analysis there. One final example let's talk about is think of X being the years of education and our y variable being someone's salary. And again, here we can think of what type of variable we have. Our x variable is numeric. Our y variable is also numeric. So for visualizing the relationship between these two, we can think of looking at um, scatter plots, in the relationship between x and y and methods of analysis, some commonly encountered ones here, are things like correlation, like Pearson's or Spearman's correlation, we'll talk about exactly what those are, simple linear regression, okay, one focus in simple linear regression is on the slope of the regression line. So here we're doing the large picture overview. We're going to slowly progress through each of these topics and more, okay, and add to them, talk about them a bit more in depth. Usually what happens after these, running through bivariate analysis, is starting to acknowledge multivariable. Analysis. And again, this is where we're looking at what effect does x1, x2, up to xk, okay, multiple x variables, what effect do those have? on some outcome. And we start to model y as a function of multiple x variables. Okay, so this usually takes place towards the end of an intro stats course or in a second course on um, generalized linear models or um, regression modeling. In our particular course, we're going to start to talk about these types of data in module number five. We're going to start to talk about relationship between two categorical variables in module number six. We're going to talk about relationship between two numeric variables in module number seven. And we're going to start to lay a foundation for multiple, uh, multiple variable analysis in module eight. And we're going to continue on this discussion in our second course where we cover all types of multivariable methods. Hope you guys liked the video. Subscribe to our channel. Like our videos. Share our videos. Statistics is almost as beautiful as a unicorn. Stick around guys, because we got lots more.